One of the big limitations of photovoltaics has been cost. The systems that are currently fielded have their roots back in the 1970s. The advantage of going to microsystems enabled photovoltaics is you can utilize semiconductor tools and LCD tools in order to increase the number of watts produced per gram of this expensive material. With microsystems enabled PV, we're actually trying to look at redesigning the entire system. So it's not an incremental improvement, but rather from the cells on up, we're, we're taking a different approach. Those tools and technologies are already in place. They have been invested in over the last 40, 50 years, potentially getting into trillions of dollars. And we are leveraging all those investments and applying them in a very unique way. Now you open up the possibility of achieving rapid and aggressive cost reductions that the semiconductor industry and the LCD industry have already done. While it's unusual for solar power, in the broader world, it's actually not that unusual. And it's very well known and well done. I've been in PV for close to 20 years. And this is the first time that I've seen something of this magnitude that really has the capability to be kind of a step change in the way PV is manufactured and in improving the performance and reliability while still using materials and processes that are common. We have in one hand the wafer with a lot of uh, solder bumps and in the other hand we have a substrate uh, that has all the interconnections. And then we make a sandwich of the two structures. Then if you put that sandwich in a hot plate, then all the interconnections are going to be done at the same time. Once you do one interconnect, thousands of interconnects get done at the same time. What we're doing isn't very far different from what is done in electronics assembly right now. A key advance that we had was to be able to take that full wafer and pixelate it populating circuit boards for a cell phone or for a computer, you know, there's many interconnects and all of those have to work. You should think about these microsystem enabled photovoltaic cells as building blocks for making a variety of things. When we first uh, started this work, we were able to process the wafer, make very small cells and then release them into a fluid. By looking at the cell, as, as a device, the smaller we make it, actually, the less chance of having a defect in it. We can take these small cells, release them onto a plastic substrate, and then get very high efficiency, flexible photovoltaics. Anytime you make something very small, whether it's solar cells or an integrated circuit, you should do so because it makes sense. You get a benefit because you get new functionality, improve performance or reduce cost. What we've discovered is that with the small solar cells, we actually get all three. This problem that we're addressing here is a wonderful example of how to exploit technology in an integrated way, in a systematic way, for good effect. To make a solution that is clean, that is efficient, that is inexpensive, that could really change, I mean, the way we live right now. To have readily available electricity anywhere and very inexpensive, that's a huge solution. I believe what we're providing with our technology is freedom in terms of how we integrate that capability into everyday objects, into vehicles or into applications that we're not even thinking about right now. The world is filled with various shapes and contours. Natural terrain, large man-made structures, vehicles, gadgets, and even the human body. And the advantage of miniaturized photovoltaic cells is they can be designed to fit aesthetically and cost effectively into all of these objects. And as a result with these cells, the powering of anything could become as simple as exposing it to light.